tranquility, sexy, moist, playful, naughty, inviting, curious, seductive. No. Yes. I am essence. I am power. I am body. The true eight wonder of the world. Giant by Andre. Exclusively at the box score, which starts now. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Cowan for box score. Hello and welcome to the box score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, joined by the Danets in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, guys, the NBA Finals saw Steph Curry and the Warriors one game closer to winning it all. McLovin, are we uh, setting our eyes upon the newest big rivalry in the NBA? God, I don't even think of Curry-LeBron as the rivalry. I felt like it was Della Vadova and Curry going head to head. They're just so different. I haven't seen it, that storyline at all. Well, you, you've got to think though, I hadn't thought about it before, if Kyrie comes back, yeah. love, whether he does or not, you would, you would be kind yeah. of, wouldn't be that surprising to have these two teams back. I think Golden State's gonna have a tougher time getting back next year than the Cavs will because they got Durant back, healthy, you assume. And then, you know, the, the West is just tougher. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Well, if you want that point made by a sports writer, you have to go to Tim Kawakami. And of course, he joined the show today and told us what we need to expect in game six. Listen, I'm with LeBron James in Cleveland. I'm never going to say I'm guaranteeing anything, but I think the Warriors have kind of figured Cleveland out and forced Cleveland to do things that they don't want to do. We see them playing a little off balance. And I think uh, when Steph Curry starts heating up, we've seen it now in several series. When he gets going, works his kind of his way through a series, finds the open spaces, figures out where they are, pretty much series over. God, is it good to have Tim back on, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's been a little while, mm -hmm. even though we talk sort of, no, well, not about him, but we mention him often. Well, I mean. But we don't have him on as much as, frankly, I think we should, given his versatility. We have him on when the Giants win the World Series. Sure. Hmm. But the Raiders in mid-down, you know, you yeah. go through the teams. Man, the Sharks are just. I think we did an Alden Smith hit with him one time. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, it's been a while, though. It's just the best, man. It's just, it's a good day when you can have Tim Kawakami on. Sure. We'll wait for the San Jose Spartans to do something big, get him back on. Uh, LeBron sort of turned some heads when he told the world what they already know, that he is the greatest player on the planet. Pauly, why do people have such a problem with this? Well, you know, I, I kind of agree. You don't say that about yourself when it was, was kind of out of place and weird. The funny thing is he's 100% right, which is interesting. But it kind of came out of nowhere. But then it, it was a really stupid question. I, I listened to the question about six times today. And it left LeBron nowhere to go because he can't say, I'm better and more confident now because I don't have my two-star players with me because then he's just completely slamming those yeah, two guys. You guys do, uh, consistently I rip people you... for boring questions, like the normal questions. At least he tried something totally different. And as Seton pointed out, it was effective because he got a good answer. Yeah, yeah but you, you can say, I'm, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. There's like a, there's so mm. many different things he could have said right. without him having feeling a need to declare I'm the best in the world. I'm not upset with him or anything like that that he said it because, again, he's right. And uh, it's just it's not a big deal. It's a stupid press conference answer that means nothing. I like LeBron pushing back a little bit against the media. Because he does get, I think that he gets roughed up unfairly. Nipped. Yeah, for, for like really dumb stuff. And he is sort of forgotten in a weird way about how great he is. The fact that he finished third in the MVP race mm. is crazy. I mean, because he's the best player on the planet. And I like that he sort of reminded the media just once by saying, by the way, don't forget, <laughs> I am the greatest right now, so. Deal with that. Hey, Fritzy, you were one of the people that had a problem with LeBron's self-confidence. Who's better at their job, LeBron at basketball or you at booking? Oh, snap. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'll give it to, I'll give it to LeBron at basketball. But uh, again, I just, it, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing it's for other people to say. We've had many guests on the show and Dan has been able to get, you know, a few of them to, uh, you know, make, make a definitive answer as to who's the best at something or, you know, or who's, who can beat up who and all kinds of fun things like that. But ultimately, you know, there's a, a line between confidence and arrogance. And when it comes to like, who's the best at something, I think it's better left said to, uh, to others to, uh, to judge that than for you to feel 
feel a need to declare that. To me, it sounds like the more you uh, you brag about yourself, the more insecure you are, the more you're actually questioning uh, how good you are at something. Sing the song like Maria in Sound of Music. Uh, you know, Todd, you're the real finals MVP anyway, because uh, I don't believe I heard this guy on Mike and Mike this morning. Tim Kawakami! <laughs> yeah, huh? Be afraid to pat yourself on the back for that one. We grabbed him before he got on that airplane. That's a, yeah. that's a big deal. Nice. He was about yeah, to be. Huge. He was about to fly out. No, we love you, Fritz. Right. By the way, he's pretty sure he was on Mike and Mike, but nobody. <laughs> he probably was. All right. Probably. Well, Tim switching Kyle from Kyle. one championship to another, the couple be in the building in Chi Town as the Blackhawks have a chance to win uh, the uh, Lord Stanley on the home ice for the first time since 1938. Now, uh, Seton, would you rather score the winning goal in overtime for your team or play a small role on the Patriots' Super Bowl victory? Small role as in get a game-winning interception? Small role? Mm -hmm. Or Not like, baller. you know, maybe a couple of uh, yards here and there. A couple yards. Man, a couple yards. I would... Oh, no, I'd rather score the game-winning goal. Absolutely. You're a legend immediately. Mm -hmm. No question. Patrick Kane. No argument here. All right, I'd, you know, I'd rather be on the box score than win the Super Bowl, that's for sure. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're going to talk some baseball. Fun fact, Babe Ruth's first car, the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. That is absolutely true. Any truck can tow a boat, any truck can climb a hill, but not everybody can drag the old Babe over to grab some cigars and hot dogs. Get some showgirls, too. It's the truck to get to done. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back to the box score. Uh, there was more than basketball on yesterday. Turns out Max Scherzer hurled an amazing game for the Nationals. 16 strikeouts and of course uh, a closeout or a, a, a close what a shutout. Oh yeah, a full game shutout for Scherzer. Uh, Fritzy, would you rather have hurled that Scherzer game or thrown a uh, no hitter with say seven strikeouts? Uh, Got to go. I think ultimately the uh, the no hitter. You know, the, the 16 strikeouts are nice, but uh, as far as the uh, the record books and being part of a select company, to feel like you really had one of the great performances in the history of baseball, I think you got to go. Uh, you gotta it's go funny to because, out. and I agree with Fritzy. I'd probably do the same thing, but you'd rather take the perceived better outing than the actual better outing. 16 strikeouts is way better. See, if, but, if, but if 16K, I guess for me, if 16Ks was like the record or something, and you didn't have like a close, no, I agree with you. I'm saying that, that, yeah. that Max Scherzer had a better outing than the no hitter the kid had the other day. Yeah, no question. You know, and but it's not historical. It doesn't put him in on any piece of paper. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like you want to be able to say that you uh, threw a no hitter, or, or to see the, the list of no hitters all time in some book right. somewhere. Yeah. I think Kerry Wood had yeah. 20 strikeouts in the game, but he gave up four hits, walked mm. a few guys, so it's not in any record book except for I think he's tied the most strikeouts. Absolutely. Well, Angel, Angel's pitcher and friend of the show, C.J. Wilson, called in to talk baseball, but uh, baseball was the furthest thing from one Danette's mind. Who do you think Jon Snow's real parents are? I mean, whose mom really is? Because his dad is was Ned Stark, Oh, right? see, so you know what? You're not a, you're, you're you're an saying, amateur. You're saying, his, you're saying he, he's actually Robert Baratheon's son? No, is he's... That what you're saying? <laughs> he's Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen's son is the uh, internet theory, that he's really royalty and that he was never Ned's son. Have you ever heard that theory? That's, I, I mean, I don't read the Game of Thrones message boards, so... Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it was so great. He, like, um, apparently there's a difference here between Game of Thrones fans, like, where there's, like... The dude who's like a star pitcher and married to a supermodel Game of Thrones fan. And then there's the turtle. What'd you call it? A nerd black hole? Yeah. On the internet. Get me out of on this message nerd black boards, hole. Yeah. Reading right. theories but about what's really going so on in the TV show. the phone afterwards, and he's like, all right, so tell me this theory and break it down slowly <laughs> for me. So he just sort of big time me on air and made me look like an idiot. That's like, st he's like star quarterback. He's yet. still going to yeah. let you know I'm, st I'm the star pitcher still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just to remind you. Sorry, I'm yeah. not on and he wasn't message boards. You. He was genuinely having a No, like after the show, he's like, all right, all right, break it down for me, buddy. During the show, he gave me nothing. He made he reinforced all you guys making fun of me for Game of Thrones like nerdy ass. By well, the way, him discussing that show is not far off from the way I talk about it. Yeah. Gargoyles and stuff. He's like, well, the Sons of Harpies are uh, doing whatever. I'm like, oh, my God. When he went, like even when he went Sons of Harpy on you, I was like, wow, he's really nerdy so out what right a now. geek. <laughs> yeah. I was like, 
dude, what? get a life. Well, Wilson tried to shake off Perloff and get back to the interview, but as expected, uh, McLovin uh, ignited the uh, nerd chatter as we bring you this. A box score exclusive. Thanks again for taking the time. Let me put on Andrew for one second. Hang on. Hey, sorry, I went so ah, next level. Is my question there? The uh, but you got to read uh, read on the internet. It's an interesting theory. I know it was the son of the king who Jamie Lannister killed. He had run away with <laughs> Ned Stark's sister, and the rumor is that they had a baby that Ned hid from everybody by pretending he was his bastard son. I know, I know. Well, people think the TV show they cast a guy with dark hair, but the book it's not that clear that he has such dark hair. So you're right. That's the, that's the main problem right there. I've spent many nights awake worrying about that very fact. You know, if you think about it, uh, C.J. Wilson works for three hours once every five to six days. Otherwise, he doesn't have a lot to do. I mean, he's got to keep in shape and stuff. So I, I understand he's got other interests. He's got a lot of time. Imagine if we worked basically one show a week, and then we had five, four to five days to prepare for our next show and mm. just keep loose. We would watch a lot of TV. We'd watch a lot. <laughs> we watch a lot of TV a lot now. right now. I'm yeah. just watch a movie yeah. before the box score. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, McLovin, I'd assume you would rank yourself as a 10 on the Game of Thrones knowledge. Uh, is Wilson legit? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's super legit on the TV side. He's decided not to ruin the TV experience by reading the book. So he knows the TV show better than me. He's pretty legit in that sense. All right, well, thank God the uh, Game of Thrones season is over. I can't take this anymore. Uh, coming up, we will fill you in <laughs> on the weekend's events, all non-Dragon related. We are back here on the box score. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but some people don't watch sports over the weekend. I know this must be a thing, but it does happen. So that's where we come in. We provide this valuable service. It's time for another edition of... Box Headline Battle Royale. I give you a headline, you give me a mock headline. Fair trade, okay. First headline, uh, Max Scherzer strikes out 16 in complete game shutout for the Nationals in Milwaukee. Let's start with McLovin. Mad Max, Scherzer rakes in 16K at the ballpark after Nationals call him freak for that weird eye thing. Mm. <laughs> Mad Max movie? Yeah. Get a lot in there. No, there was I a think. dog in there, I think, with mismatched eyes. Polly, your headline. Max pads his stats with 16 strikeout for four Oh, minutes. snap. Max this guy pads. just went. Max. Holy That's smoke green. Maxi headline there. Fritzy, your headline. <laughs> He's a Scherzer thing. Another Max effort. He's a Scherzer Ooh. thing. Fritzy, unsuccessful in uh, absorbing some of Polly's uh, applause. All right, Seaton, your mock headline. <laughs> Pitch perfect. Apparently, Max Scherzer and a Cantric. Pitch perfect. Okay, and yeah, yeah. Kendrick, I got it. Yeah. Kendrick, <laughs> yeah. Pitch perfect. Almost had a perfect game. Didn't. <laughs> but he can't. You know? He can't. Stop, Andrew. Just stop. Oh, okay. Uh, second headline: <laughs> Steph Curry <laughs> and LeBron James lead the way in Game Five Finals clash. Start us off, Polly. Fold in state. Cavs tap out in the fourth quarter. Ooh, Fold in state. Snap. MMA. Fritz, your headline. MVP, third place in voting, King about to finish second for ring. Mm -hmm. There's the applause, of course. Seaton, please. I'm kind of embarrassed that I even had to use this one, but embarrassed. whatever. Della De Hova, Curry's got 99 problems, but Matthew ain't one. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of lame. it's only been used 10 billion times. That's all right. Uh, McLovin. All right, I have a sort of a modification of Fritzy's. MVP penis. Remember when that was a big story? <laughs> Just saying. Topical. MVP penis. That's a little bit on the head. <laughs> Our third headline. Whoa. Oh my that was an immature humor that... where you idiots over there like. Oh. <laughs> idiots. You idiots over there. Wow. I don't know. Oh, and they boo again. Come on, people. <laughs> Our third headline, NB Park regains top ranking after winning third straight women's PGA championship. We will start with Pauly. Inbelievable. Park wins another Park PGA title. All right. Kind of All right. 
cut out. Very nice. Right. Seat in your headline. All right. Pollen haters. Envy Stings competition. PGA wants park closed. <laughs> Pollinator. Pollen hater. <laughs> like bees, they pollinate, they pollinate you. flowers. Okay. Showing some entomology on that one. McLovin. I know you guys love when I sing, so uh, Saturday in B Park. I don't get why the producers picked this topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was singing. I like that. Saturday. Oh. Peter yeah. And a man That's selling great. ice cream. Let's see. My interest in this accomplishment is stuck in park. Ooh, sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> Our final headline, the Blackhawks just one win away from the Stanley Cup after edging lightning in Tampa. Uh, let's start off with Seton. Wampa Bay, lightning fans ups <laughs> upset team came stem close, but no Stam close. Stam close. Wow. Ball game. Back in wow. Wampa Bay, stem close. That was the last second Hail Mary, and I think it landed. Wow, stem All right. close. Fritzy. <laughs> Damn close, but no cigar. Second city? I don't think so. <laughs> Chicago about to finish first. Nice. Nice. Some legends. That's great. Leaving the humor out. Oh, uh, <laughs> Polly. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to compete with Seed. Mine said cup check and a bunch of other words. Just to give them that one. Oh, no. This is bad. All right, McLovin. Oh, it's a, it's a bad one for Polly? What, what, do you want to Mine is one? also. I also, have, I also have cup check, but I have a better at Blackhawks hope to deliver a final kick to the Lightning's nuts. I don't know. I didn't have nuts in there. Yeah. I went with two body parts. Who are you? What's I don't know. I, I'm trying to Andrew? please the box score producers. Well, all of a sudden, you're going to have a fart joke in there. The yeah. Mark Headline Championship belt goes to. Now Fritz is clean and too. unfunny, and you're dirty. See what happens? Seton O'Connor. Wow. I got to, you know what? I can't accept it. Saturday in B Park was no, no, definitely no, no. the Stand best headline. Close. No, Stand Close was, Stand close Stand close was genius. Sealed the deal. It was genius, it I know. The deal. Saturday in B Park, <laughs> that's the winner. That was Take Chicago it, All right, don't go away. We are taking a break to remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty with its best in class towing torque and horsepower does not need one. It does need a belt too. It just has that lovely grill right there in front so you know the Ram's coming at you. Get out of the way. Oh, even though you have the right of way. God's glory, Ram. Closed up shop here at the Box Score Saloon. Uh, last night before the NBA Finals, uh, Hetfeld and the other guy from Metallica came out there and played the national anthem <laughs> in front of their home crowd. Uh, Seton, how would you rate the performance? Hetfeld. Hetfeld. That was rad. It was awesome. 10 out of 10. Uh, and the other guy. Hetfeld and the other guy. Oh my God. <laughs> it was great. It was really great. I got a question about that. You're a Metallica fan. I'm a Metallica fan. Lars Ulrich is one of the faces of Metallica, and usually he's, wherever there's a camera, yeah. Lars is usually there. Usually chewing gum, too. Right. Now, why would, was Lars not invited to play? Did they just need two guitars? It's too tough to set up a guitar, a drum set? Man, that's a good question. Because Lars is the face of Metallica as much as Hetfield is. He sure is. He sure is. What um, do you think? I don't know. I think they're sort of like, you know what? It's kind of a guitar thing right now. And um, why don't you go sit behind the kit there, sell some more art. Lars, <laughs> not happy. I'm trying to chewing get Chewing gum. Mind. Guys are... Guys, a rampant gum chewer. Mm. All, right. All right, well, with so many styles of performers over the years, it's uh, never a shock to see anyone playing the national anthem, but I will give you guys each a decade, uh, and you will tell me uh, who you would want to play the national anthem from that decade. They'll, they need to be formed in that decade or uh, come to prominence in that decade. So we will start with Polly. Uh, any band in the 60s that you would like to play the national anthem? You know, I want to go. Uh Late Doors, like the last few months of the Doors, when the this the more like on stage incidents we're having, like down in Miami, New Haven. Um, <clears throat> I don't care the sporting event you pick, but I want to see the Doors have an international incident during a sporting event as a producer. Oh, I like that. Uh, Seton, up next, any Thank band you. from the '70s? Well, I immediately went to two places. 
uh, with the 70s, and I think most people would when you think of that era and great music. Um, and I'm torn between either the Bee Gees or Debbie Boone. Ooh, you light nice. up my life. You. Yeah. National Anthem, Stanley Cup. That's what I want to see. Hmm. Hmm. I am. Uh, I was assigned the 80s, so I will go NBA Finals. I will go with the Bengals. They will sing a mashup of the National nice. Anthem along with Eternal Flame and Manic Monday. And during the National Anthem, Red I will tea. have my right Dad. hand over my heart, but cannot vouch for the other That's hand. as good as it gets right there. Yeah, Ritzy would have his right hand somewhere else. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, Mc very good call, McLovin, uh, you have, uh, let's see, the, uh, the 90s. Who do you have? Yeah, you know, like, I think Creed did perform at every sporting event in the 90s, so I'm going to go with Pearl Jam, and they're going to perform at the NBA Finals when the NBA returns to Seattle. Wow. Oh, to snap. To have Eddie Vedder there. Ed. And Soundgarden jumps out there, too, and it's just, uh, what was that band they put together? When Soundgarden Pearl Citizen Jam. of the Dog? Yes. What oh, about my. Citizen Dick? It's Citizen Dick to play. And Citizen Dick, who's huge. I think they're touring Belgium right uh, now. Huge in Belgium. They come out too. It's going to be the <laughs> ultimate grunge reunion. Huge in Belgium. <laughs> All right, Todd, you're choosing any band from the last five years. Oh, I'm going to put uh, Victoria Justice and Ariana Grande together, and they can uh, sing whatever they want as long as they're wearing <laughs> a, a, little, uh, a little lingerie. They can, uh, they can sing whatever they want and do it at any uh, stadium or arena th of their choice. To catch a predator. All right. <laughs> uh, please have a seat. Uh, seat, let's go back to you. Uh, the best performance uh, by a band that you've seen at a sporting event. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I don't know, but I went to the Grammys once, and it was the year that Joe Strummer died, and uh, I saw it was like Bruce Springsteen, Dave Grohl, Elvis Costello, wow. um, like and like five other just like legendary musicians all do like a whole bunch of Clash songs, uh, and that was pretty amazing. That was also the same year Simon and Garfunkel got back together for the same time, wow. so or for the first time rather. So that I, that was pretty much like the coolest thing I've ever seen. I went to one that not even come close to topping that. It's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. My sister went to Miami of Ohio, a little college in uh, Oxford, Ohio, and it was the last game of the season. Ron Harper was the star of the basketball team. Oh yeah! And at the end of the game, it was like Little Siblings Weekend. At the end of the game, like stick around for a concert. For a concert, I'm like all right, and they start moving the stage. And Cool in the Gang played. I was like, oh, this Salad is great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Late 80s, Cool in the Gang, like going Ron yeah. Harper. It was like a, a bar mitzvah broke out at a basketball game. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Love it. For me. Um, I actually did see Grover Washington Jr. play uh, National Anthem on the saxophone at the Sixers game. Oh. That's a guy who did Just the Two of Us. Oh, my <laughs> God. It's, it's not quite Marvin Gaye at the Lakers, or was that the All-Star game, it's but it's, it's the next best thing. Yeah, I, I saw Michael Jackson's, uh, I guess it was the halftime show at the Bills-Cowboys game. At the oh, Bills Bowl wow. Was, uh, That's the big one. That was pretty awesome. I don't think there was a close second. That's you tremendous. Know, unless you do New Kids at the, on the Block. Where were you sitting? Were you on the field? Were you in the skybox? No, I was, I was pretty high. I was in a regular seat, but oh, okay. pretty high up. But um, yeah, Michael Jackson nice. was a big I've only been to like two Super Bowls, and that was uh, luckily one of the two that I was uh, in attendance for. Well, I am just getting news from I-Team West that they have announced the uh, national anthem singer for game six tonight. Oh, no, tomorrow night. Here it is. Yes, Tim Kawakami. From there. Yeah. yeah. TK. Wow. All right, Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Uh, we will Tim be in the Kalkami. New York City Man Cave. Jim Parsons, Jay Farrow, Jose Batista will be among the luminaries all stopping by the uh, Soho Studios uh, in New York tomorrow with us. The Stack Show, we will all tune in. Uh, we are back with the box score tomorrow. Same time, same channel. iTunes and Podcast One if you want the podcast. Bye, you too, man. Cheers. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!